Well, let's speak now to news reporter Steve Dorsey, who broke the story of the syndrome affecting U.S. personnel in Cuba in 2016 for CBS and has covered development since. Steve, good to have you with us. Uh, named for uh, the the uh, Cuban capital, where it was first reported, but this has cropped up in, in various other locations as well, hasn't it? Absolutely. We've been uh, hearing over the, over the years of cases spreading throughout China, originating first in Guangzhou. We've been reporting on, uh, on at least one case in Uzbekistan. Now we're hearing from uh, 60 Minutes uh, and, and other reporters that there have been cases in Ukraine, in Germany, and now the Pentagon and the White House confirming that last year at a NATO summit, uh, a senior DOD official, a Pentagon official, had similar symptoms as this uh, purported uh, Havana syndrome, which the federal government here in the U.S. is now calling anonymous health incidents. That's a evolution of what were first described as health attacks by the U.S. State Department. Uh, so far, though, not much more information publicly revealed by the Biden administration. Uh, so we've heard about some of the symptoms, um, earaches, headaches, uh, nosebleeds. Uh, and this has been all attributed to some kind of so-called directed energy attack. What, what could be causing this? Well, listen, there's been a lot of research over the years, studies done by uh, universities, by the uh, National Institutes of Health by academic journals uh, theorizing what could be be behind these strange constellations of injuries and symptoms, everything from what we're hearing is a directed energy device, which 60 Minutes has described as something that could be like a, a secret uh, sonic weapon that is perhaps developed by a secret military intelligence unit of Russia. Uh, or it could be microwave signals aimed at uh, U.S. diplomatic personnel, but also undercover intelligence officers in Cuba and elsewhere around the world. Uh, other officers working for different parts of the government, including the FBI. Uh, or listen, we've heard uh, much other um, skepticism of this, including from Cuba itself, saying that it had no involvement in this. It could have been loud crickets at the time, or it could have been in the imagination of all these folks that uh, claim they have uh, things as se severe as mild traumatic brain injury, uh, which was, uh, according to some victims, noted in scans of their brains. Uh, and finally, Steve, what do you make of the contention on the one hand that this could be attributed to Russia? Russia, as we've heard, denies this. On the other hand, we have had the U.S. government previously saying that it doesn't believe a foreign power is behind these attacks. Yeah, and that's something that uh, some of the victims have been complaining about, that the U.S. isn't taking this seriously enough. There's been doubts about uh, whether an adversary is involved, whether there is any kind of weapon involved, whether their injuries are, are actually real. Um, but we do know that there is uh, reporting and intelligence that suggests a, a foreign adversary could be involved uh, in this. It could be Russia. It could be another adversary. Um, but there are conclusions that it's likely not Cuba necessarily involved to a full extent, that they simply don't have the resources or the technology capable of, of, of launching these supposed attacks. Okay, Steve, thank you very much. Steve Dorsey.